Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faithfuls, y'all know what time it is already. Y'all ready? Let's go. This is Kyle Juszczyk, and you're listening to Nothing But Niners. This is Charles Haley. You're listening to Nothing But Niners. So now they've got to start from deep in their end of the field, and Garrison Hurst takes advantage of it. He takes the handle, hits to his right, gets to the 20. He's on the 30. Needs to cut in. He comes back up the right sideline. Breaks the third tackle. Comes down to the 30. He's down to the 20. He's down to the 10. He's down to the 5. He's down to the 5. going on faithfuls it's your boy mike from nothing but niners crew guys i am here i am live i am direct actually i'm not live it's going to be a recording that i'm going to release on patreon first and then it's going to go on over there to the youtube channel okay so guys man i hope you guys are here i hope you guys are strapped in ready to have a little bit of fun now some of you might be thinking mike why on earth would you start this on youtube i mean start this on patreon and not directly on youtube and the truth of the matter is this it's because I'm going to have some background music playing today. All right, so I want y'all to strap in. All right, today's song is going to be a little bit like a party in the Palisade, but it's not a party in the Palisade. So I'll tell you guys exactly what we're doing. Actually, let me tell you guys what we're doing now before I get into it. So the 49ers and Brandon Ayuk's contract negotiations have been going back and forth. There's been a lot of back and forth. Um, and most recently, we've had an exp uh, we've got a chance to experience Brandon Ayuk talking to uh, the guys over at the Pivot. A lot of 49er fans saying, where are these clips from? Where are they coming from? So I decided, hey, I'm not going to show you just the clips. I'm going to show you the entire thing. Much like how I break down pressures here, I'm going to break down this entire interview from start to finish and all even the trailer and highlights that they start the uh, episode with. All right. Uh, but before we do, I want to get into this part here. Uh, my man, Brandon Ayuk. He's uh, walking through an airport, making my way downtown, walking fast, right? So this is what he's doing. He's out there, and he gets stopped by TMZ Sports. Let's take a listen. The world wants to know, okay? The, the, the Steelers had through everybody off. Do you, what, what's the feeling? What's the vibe? Where are you at? I don't know. I'm just vibing, man. I'm just hanging out. He doesn't know. I, 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 I wonder. I, I just got to know. TMZ? Yes, TMZ Sports. What up, dog? <laughs> well, I got I got to know, man. You want to be in the Niners uniform next year? Sure. See, I knew it, man. Sure. So, so can you tell the fans that are all wigging out, making up all these things, you know, having all these theories? What what was like the 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 meaning when you were rocking the hats? What hat? The the Steelers hat. I was wearing a Steelers hat, was I? Yeah, everyone on the on the internet, look that shit up right now. The whole internet's like he's wearing the Steelers hat. It was not a Pittsburgh Steelers hat, just so we're clear, or the Pittsburgh Pirates hat. It was still a Pittsburgh hat, but not a not a Steelers hat. Ayuk is aware that he wasn't wearing a Steelers hat. Uh, he didn't want to be that guy that betrayed his team um, completely, right? He just wanted to let them know it's a little real, you know? Anybody can get it. Um, but it was a Pittsburgh Pirates hat that Brandon Ayuk was wearing and this is about the uh this is referring to the video where he's heading to the stadium uh this video was recorded and uploaded by Brandon Ayuk from his Instagram all right uh and if you guys need reference points I'll show you that in the meantime let me get back to what this guy is saying even though he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about 
had him to leave our stadium. Pittsburgh Pirates. Pittsburgh Pirates. Pirates just hit me up on IG. They're like, we see you wearing Pittsburgh Pirates hat. We're going to send you some gear. So I said, all right. Ah, uh, so there's no Pittsburgh connection. It's not like that. Everyone can rest easy. Yeah, everybody can rest easy. I love it, man. Yeah, yeah, on our side, everybody rest easy. Hey, listen, man. We, I, I want to see you bring California, even though I'm a Rams fan. I want to see you guys next year. You're, you're more suited to bring a title to, to California, man. Okay? But look, look. Hey, any message to the fans? Stay tuned. Stay tuned, man. Stay tuned. Hey, well, you deserve that big paycheck. Yes, sir. Appreciate that. The world wants to know. Okay? All right. So this clip is after the interview that we are about to watch. Uh, but this clip is also after this next video that I'm going to show you guys. And again, this is in case anybody missed what the uh, TMZ representative was asking Brandon Ayuk about. In case you guys missed it, here's that video really quick. All right. Uh, he's in the car. He's got some music going. Da, 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 da. Shows the uh, dashboard. And for any of you guys that have been to Levi Stadium, you can see how fast he's going in this parking lot. He seemed really excited about his trip to Levi's. Check this out. Da, 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 da. This is my shit, man. This is my shit. Open up the motherfucking gate. That's it. Da, 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 da. This is my shit, man. Shit, open up the motherfucking gate. Driving the Lamborghini too. I don't know if y'all tell. I don't know. I don't know if y'all could tell or not, but that's a Lambo right there that my man's whipping. Um, shout out to shout out to Brandon Ayuk and the Lambo, you know. Um, but that's the video. That's the hat. Not Steelers. It is Pittsburgh, but not Steelers. Uh, I tell you what, man. For this guy to be a Rams fan, if that's absolutely true, uh, I respect him for knowing at least it was a Pittsburgh hat uh and even paying attention to brandon Ayuk in that sense so uh that's that's cool but i want to have some fun i want to loosen up so uh let's fucking get it man. Come on. yeah y'all hear it baby it's time to stop being greedy baby we gotta give to the needy baby the question is do the 49ers need Brandon Ayuk? Is Brandon Ayuk being greedy? Is there a common ground that they can come to? Come on. Everybody wants to hurt. Yeah, nice little throwback here from 96. 96, 97. Huh? Little throwback here. My man, my favorite rapper, DMX, rest in peace. Not, my, not, not who I think is the best. And my favorite rapper, Mike Ng. If you wish to add this to the list, cool. I don't know if it's there or not yet. But, uh, you know, this is going to be the one for today's episode. It was recorded in 97, released in 98. So that's what you got there. Blessed with the gift. Rest with a stiff. Leave it alone. When you walk past the dog house, leave it a bone. Dog spice. DMX, stop being greedy. Brandon Ayuk, stop being greedy. All right. These clips are going around on social media. Let me turn this down. Let me turn this down a little bit. These clips are going around on social media, and everybody seems to be against Brandon Ayuk. I've seen people calling him extremely selfish, saying that he's all about himself. Um, they said that Debo Samuel was insulted in the clip during the pivot. He didn't even defend him. He just sat there. There's been all kinds of crazy shit going on. Um, and you can shape an interview to fit whatever narrative you want it to be, especially if you clip it up. What the? What is this? Especially if you clip it up. So today's episode is going to be the full interview of Brandon Ayuk on the pivot. Pivot is one of my favorite podcasts. Uh, I don't listen to a lot of them. This is one of them. And for those of you who don't know where they are, you guys should subscribe. Check them out. A lot of hard work. All right. <clears throat> Let's just go ahead and get to it, man. I'm going to leave the music going in the background because I'm not trying to get sued by anybody. Uh, so let's break this down. Hello, 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 hello. All, right. All right. So here's the first thing I noticed right away. 
I know this is going to sound crazy to y'all, but this is what I noticed right away. Brandon Ayuk, interview. Who's the first person you see that's not a part of the pivot? <laughs> Look at him. Oh, this- Jaden Daniels, holding a young man, smiling here in the background, and Brandon Ayuk in the doorway. Red flag number one. Don't worry. Don't take my word for it. The guy's going to bring it up later. Let's get to it. Hello, 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 hello. hello, hello. Oh, hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, this is a true cool violation. Chan. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? Well, what up, BA? Brandon Ayuk, second team all pro. Um, first round draft pick of the San Francisco 49ers, over 1,300 yards. Shoot. Damn utility, man. I mean, that's how y'all like them over there in San Francisco. Hold up. Let me let take a step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Here we go. Let's get busy. Welcome to the pivot. A part of Fanatics. It's Fred Taylor. It's Channing Crowder. I am Ryan Fred, Clark. Fred. The first question I was going to ask you is weird now, right? Because you brought him with you. And I was going to be like, man, you and your team. He said it's weird now. So you wanted to ask him about quiet, this guy before. You know, throughout these negotiations, you guys haven't put anything out there. And then, you know, a little bit ago, we get a TikTok. You know what I'm saying? And you say, uh, I'm laughing, but I'm crying for real. And you're talking to Jaden Daniels, second overall pick of Washington Commanders. And you say, man, they don't want me back. So what was the thought behind putting out that post and including that FaceTime in it? Well, first of all, that's my dog right there. We, that's my dog. We good friend. We talk on the phone every day. So just like we talked earlier, we, we're starting to get our own footage. We're getting our own footage, recording everything. Just enjoying the process. Just have my lady record the stuff, record everything that's going on so that I can look back on it. Because it's, it's exciting times. It's stressful, uh, but it's exciting. And um, I want to have these memories. And that was just a moment that she caught that got off the phone with the Niners. They told me what they told me. I passed the information on to him. He said they told me. All right. So let's start there. You guys are familiar with my work. You guys know that I broke this down already. You guys aren't new here. And if you are new here, I suggest you go back and take a look. Uh, but I broke down this Brandon Ayuk uh, video clip with Jaden Daniels. And Jaden Daniels appeared to be watching a 49ers game. And his wife happened to be recording from a 4K device, vlogging the whole thing. Um, and he said she just happened to catch it. There's lies and there's truth in both of these. Start with the negative so I can end positive. That's what, that's what my goal is going to be today is to end positive. I'm going to let you guys know right now. Uh, the lies, the negatives. She just so happened to catch it, he says. Right? That's just not true. This was set up from the very beginning. She was supposed to catch it. She says in that same exact clip, you guys got me vlogging this shit. Like she says it herself. He asked her. He requested her to do that. This was not caught on the new iPhone 15 or 16 or 28, whatever the fuck iPhone is out. This was not caught on the newest uh, Galaxy Ultra 24 or whatever the Google, it wasn't caught on any of that. This was caught on a 4K phone, recorded and uploaded, okay? Don't take my word for it. There is a screenshot in the video that you guys can see. I'm not going to play the video. Did a whole breakdown already. This is all by design. That's the lie. That's the lie. Our own footage. We're getting our own footage, recording everything. Just enjoying the process. Just have my lady record the stuff, record everything that's going on so that I can look back on it because it's, it's exciting times. It's stressful. That's the truth in this part. Brandon Ayuk is about to sign the biggest paycheck of his entire life, whether it be the fifth year option for $14 million or it be a contract extension. This is literally the most exciting time of his life. Hey, you guys went out and bought a lottery ticket and you won $14 million, you'd be dancing and recording shit too. That's the worst case scenario for this young man. So yeah, she should be contract recording and negotiating recording and all that stuff. And vlogging this stuff and making your own memory book. Memory book. It's 2024 for crying out loud, guys. Let's be real. Let's be honest with who we are, what we are, what era we're in. This is no longer hiring a camera crew that works for CBS to follow you around. You got to pay for the footage on VHS and and shit like that. This is pull out the camera, record it yourself, edit it, crop it, microphone, check it, one, two, one, two, whatever it is that you need to do. And this is your story to tell. 
I absolutely believe that he has his fiance vlogging the situation from start to finish. And when he goes to sign that contract, just with that quill pin, have the 49ers have a camera crew in there, she's going to be on the other side. I absolutely believe that. And it should happen if he signs that extension with the 49ers or if he signs that fifth-year option contract with the Niners. Like That should happen. And he doesn't even have to sign a fifth-year option. It's it's already part of the rookie deal. I understand, but you guys know what I'm, I'm saying that to prove my point. It should all be vlogged. And if things fall apart with the 49ers, it should be vlogged because he's going to get some money on the open market even next year. And when he signs that deal, now all of a sudden the documentary becomes that much longer. These guys are their own businesses and their own brands, and they have to plan ahead. Brandon Ayuk could be the best wide receiver the NFL has ever seen, the best wide receiver in 49ers franchise history. He could be the worst. Well, he couldn't be the worst because he's already done more than A.J. Jenkins, right? But my point is this. He is the only first-round pick wide receiver of the 49ers Kyle Shanahan regime. And he's priced himself into a certain window. And we'll get to that later. But it should be documented for better or for worse because there's still a story to be told. Let's get to it. Uh, but it's exciting, man. Um, I want to have these memories. And that was just a moment that she caught that got off the phone with the Niners. They told me what they told me. I passed the information on to him. You said they told you what they told you. There's no way the Niners said Brandon Ayuk, first round pick. Call him out on his shit. Wide receiver. We don't call him out on his shit. They didn't say what that shit. What was it exactly that they told you? That what did they say? that conversation with jd get right they to the told shit. me that they didn't think that we we're on the same page and that they didn't believe that we we're going to and that was about it at that time but it's part of it it's part of the contract negotiations yeah. trying to sway stuff in either direction so whether that's 100 percent true or not i guess that's still to find out the body language is huge here right ryan clark to ask this question straight out the gate this is a this is a checkmate move this is one of the moves you save for later in the game this is not something that you just ask in passing, right? That's a heavy-hitting question straight out the gate. Body language doesn't say that, though. Body language looks like he's just kind of going through the motions. It's weird. It's weird. You ask this kind of question straight out the gate, you're leaning forward. You're doing one of these things. You're talking to the person. You leaning in. Are you telling me the 49ers told you they don't want you? That's what that clip said. You don't even say, I don't believe that. You don't say, there's no way they said that. You say, in the clip, you said the 49ers didn't want you. Are they crazy to say that to you? Did they really say that to you? That's how you ask that question. Under normal circumstances. But the body language doesn't say that. There's no energy. With a very, very heavy question, very direct question. Exactly that they told you that prompted that. Got off the phone with the Niners. They told me what they told me. I passed the information on to him. You said they told you what they told you. There's no way the Niners said Brandon Ayuk, first round pick, all pro wide receiver. We don't want you back. What was it exactly that they told you that prompted that conversation with JD. They told me that they didn't think that we we're on the same page and that they didn't believe that we we're going to. And that was about it at that time. But it's part of it. It's part of the contract negotiations, yeah. trying to sway stuff in either direction. So whether that's 100% sure or not, I guess that's still to find out. The talks are, though, that they, they do want you. Are they far off from what you expect your, what, what you consider your value to be? Throughout this process, there was times where we were super close, or I felt out. Throughout this process, there were times that we were super close. This is important, ladies and gentlemen. I got a feeling, listen, these guys are asking the questions straight out the gate, and we're getting answers straight out the gate. I might not go through this whole 55-minute joint because I don't want to waste y'all time. 55 minutes with me is going to turn into three hours, all right? Um, but, hey, I'm feeling pretty good. I got nothing but time. And maybe y'all want to see somebody like me break this whole thing down. But I'm going to, when I feel like they start to get the bullshit, I'm, I might cut this thing short. Because I want to get right to it. I want to get to it. But this isn't just about the contract stuff. I'm not here to find out the contract talks. We're not going to find out numbers in this, I don't think. I don't think he's ever going to confirm or deny any number that the Niners offered or anything like that. However, 
I do want to know his psyche. I want to understand the man, Brandon Ayuk. I came on here a couple days ago and I told you guys about seeing Debo at the podium without a haircut, without a hairline, without a shape up. Brandon Ayuk is in that same boat, bro. And this is an interview with The Pivot. This is going to be viewed by hundreds of thousands of people, maybe a million, millions of people, right? And so he should be prepared. He came in with somebody. He knew where he was going. He didn't just, you know, it's not like he just got a phone call and said, hey, pop up. He was out with somebody and they showed up. No, this means that he made a concerted effort to bring his people with him. All right. So no shape up. Hairline look crazy, bro. Hey, mine do too. I haven't had my hair done in, in months. Let me be very clear what I'm saying. But I'm doing this shit on my platform. If the pivot called me and hundreds of thousands of people are going to be exposed to nothing but Niners, I'm going to put my best face on. Brandon Ayuk has been exposed to millions of people already. But you knew you were sitting here on this day at this time. You make time to improve your appearance. I digress. I was telling people, like, tell my agent, hey, let me get my suit ready. I'm ready. I'm going to get it back to the Look, Bay. I got to get right were. to sign this contract. There's days and times, like in the past month or so, where you could say, yeah, we're pretty far apart. So, well, How much influence from the other guys, how much influence do their signings have on your market? I think a lot. I think a lot. Oh, but oh, oh, oh. Three back-to-back -back phenomenal questions. You telling me that the Niners told you they didn't want you? How close have y'all been? And all these new wide receivers signing these contracts. How much of an influence has that made, made to you personally? Brandon Ayuk? Do their signings have on your market? I think a lot. I think a lot. But um, with that, I felt like when the season was over, I was trying to, um, I was back and forth with them every day. Like my agent called me an hour. We get all, we were on the phone for an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes, two hours hang up the phone, he calls them, he calls me back in an hour, we're trying to bang this thing out. Um, and I wasn't worried about any other guy. I was just trying to get what I felt was uh, appropriate for me at that time. Okay, season's over, Super Bowl's done, and they start negotiations immediately. Love to hear it, love to hear it. I'm not worried about any other guy, I'm trying to get what I think is fair to me. Now see, I'm not saying I'm calling bullshit, but there's a market. <clears throat> there's the top 10 wide, paid wide receivers and those top 10 paid guys have numbers where do I fall in here with those current contracts I should be paid in this area right here that's what Brandon Ayuk is saying to himself that's how the contract negotiations start but other people did end up getting money and that's why this is a phenomenal question by Taylor here He's asking, what do these new contracts do to you in negotiations? Ayuk said, at the beginning, right after the Super Bowl, nothing. I was worried about what I thought was fair for me. Fair market. If he says the word like fair, he's talking about fair market. The asking price. Over, I was trying to, um, I was back and forth with them every day. Like my agent called me an hour. We get all, we're on the phone for an hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes, two hours, hang up the phone. He calls them. He calls me back in an hour trying to bang this thing out. Um, and I wasn't worried about any other guy. I was just trying to get what I felt was uh, appropriate for me at that time. That was appropriate a rush. Appropriate for me is fair market. You don't pick up the phone with the 49 and say, hey, man, I'll, I'll take $16 million a year. Your agent won't let you do that, even if that's what you want. Your agent's job is to know the numbers, know the contracts, and get you slotted where you're supposed to be. There's no way Brandon Ayuk said, hey, guys, I think I think $24 million a year is fair. Can we just get that done? And even if he did, that number had to come from somewhere. He didn't sit down and say, well, I have about $1.5 million in expenses a year, and I want to get that covered, and I would like to save a million a year. And just in case of an emergency on all of my expenses... I might need to have another $750,000 laying around somewhere. So let's just get a deal for $3.25 million a year. That should keep me safe. and comfortable. That's not how this works. That's not how this works at all. So for him to say he wasn't worried about other people, he didn't have to worry about them because what was written is done. What was in stone was already in stone. 
but the stone was about to change. That was, that was early on in the off season. We couldn't come to the room at that time. And then on top of that, other guys decided to come, right. or not decided to come, they, they got paid, their teams rewarded them. The market changed. Other guys the got is, paid. So the market we changed to what the market that is. Time where I'm gonna say this every opportunity that I get, the market is the market. Is Brandon Ayuk a wide receiver one on a Super Bowl or a really good team? Yes, he is. What is the market for a good number one wide receiver? It's not about how you feel. It's not about how I feel. It's not about what Brandon Ayuk feels. It's not about what his agent feels. The market is the market. The top paid players at these positions get these contracts. Are you just a wide receiver too? That's the contract you're going to get. And they will compare those numbers for wide receiver twos. But the numbers don't say that Brandon Ayuk is wide receiver two. Where other guys wouldn't affect the market, and I could just do what I wanted to do. But even at that time, they still didn't agree with, with uh, where I was at. So we really haven't agreed this whole entire time. And for the last month, we haven't said much at all. So, so they didn't agree after the Super Bowl. Yeah, I they damn I want sure don't agree now. But I can't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. And in that analogy, Come on. Channing. Channing, straight out the gate with it. I want a Lamborghini, but I can't afford it. I wish my house was worth the house that I'm in right now, where this green screen is set up right now, where this microphone is, okay? I wish this house that I'm in right now was worth $4.2 million so I could sell it for that much. But it's not. It's not. Right? I want, I wish, that's not what reality is. What is reality? Say good, much good. At all, so. Yo, when I tell y'all yeah, they came I out swinging, I want a they are swinging. But I can't afford it. <laughs> 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 and in that analogy, your ass is a Lamborghini. Are you comfortable? Are you comfortable being in a position, like being where you are right now? In terms of what? Being... That next guy, that next receiver, we talking about who is it? AJ Brown got hit him in the head. Justin Jefferson. Jetta hit him in the head. Waddle. I'm James on Ross Sick Brown. Waddle, Waddle, Waddle hit him. Yeah. It was all them guys. All them guys that now hit him see, in the Waddle's head. Waddle's interesting because he's wide receiver two on this team. Yeah, for sure. Mm. PTSD okay. brought a all right. new we got struggle a into my here. life. For sure. Bro, you on ESPN every day. And they talking about your contract. Because he's the next guy. He's the he's the star wide receiver that's the next domino to fall. And and being in that position, that's a position you've never been in, in your life. Right. Is is that is you good with that? I'm cool. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I felt like for the past four years, I kind of you know took a back seat to this guy or this guy or this guy or whatever, and kind of just did what Ooh. I had to do. And these are the comments. I saw a lot of flack on social media for these comments. So now we're getting some context here. They asked him specifically, "Are you comfortable being the next man up at your position?" And these negotiations, because let me tell you, and this is a good question. It's not as heavy hitting as those first three, but this is a good question. This is a good question. I have heard people like Nick Bosa say, hey, it stresses me out. I don't want any parts of it. I'm letting my agent handle it. George Kittle uttered something similar. Fred Warner was a little more hands on. Richard Sherman was all hands on deck for his contract with the 49ers. I'm not letting an agent sign me to a bad deal. If I'm going to sign a bad deal, I'm going to do it myself. But Richard Sherman earned every penny in the contract that he signed and didn't have to pay 10% to anybody. Didn't have to pay 15, 20% to anybody. Well done, Mr. Sherman. Because that same contract that you signed at market value would have been worth 4 or $5 million more based off of what you would have had to give away and then pay in taxes. Well done, Mr. Sherman. Well done. Right? Not everybody is built for the pressure of contract negotiations, the tactics your agent and agency are going to ask you to do. So this is a very good question. And they talk about your contract. Because he's the next guy. He's the, he's the star wide receiver that's the next domino to fall. And, and being in that position, that's a position you've never been in in your life. All right. Is, is that is you good with that? I'm cool. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I'm having fun. I felt like for the past four years, I kind of, you know, took a back seat to this guy or this guy or this guy or whatever and kind of just did what I had to do. Kill. And now I'm in a position that when McCaffrey. I wake up in the morning, 
turn on Debo. the TV, they talking about me. I get on my phone, they talking about me. He had to wait his turn. My mom calling me, they talking about not me. Not negotiating if we don't have to. You gotta so wait. I'm enjoying. Gotta wait, I'm, just, I'm enjoying the process. I know at the end of the day, this ain't. This is this is the time for me. Uh, this time period right now before the season starts and uh, to get paid and to maximize my value and uh, continue to show who I am as a player. But right now, it's about it's about one thing. I, I, we all think that you've done that. You've shown that who you are as a player. Uh, obviously, you're the best pure or natural receiver on your team. Hands down. We know what Debo. These, I, this, 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 he just said Debo. Here come the shots at Debo. Brings to the table. And certainly not uh, shortchanging. He called Ayuk the abilities. best Ayuk on But from a natural receiver, a pure but receiver standpoint, receiver. I'm pretty sure we can all agree that. You're you're the best on your on your team. Route right. And you've earned I, we you've earned the right to be in that conversation, to be in the highest paid receivers in, in the game. Whether that's either by uh the the, the franchise tag, which sucks because it doesn't give you that long run long term security, but that's the, the twenty four to twenty six million per year. But in your market, based on your numbers, we would think that you would be certainly around that thirty million dollar you know, a, a year mark. And again, this is me just sitting on the sideline. I don't know the numbers. I'm not an agent. I haven't uh, uh, dissected None of the us whole are thing. You know, None of us are ball, Respectfully, you know, I, I think you have that ability. Um, is there, it, it, and I think that it also got blown out of proportion when the FaceTime with, with Jaden came out. I think if, if an OG can give you any advice, it's to continue to keep it away from the media. You can't. Mm negotiate mm. contracts through the media so okay this is where ogs have to catch up with the times and i promise you i'm not going to pause this thing a lot once we get past the important shit but the important shit is right at the, they 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 came out swinging this is a mike tyson fight right here you know uh you know if you guys are familiar with mike tyson first round knockout second third round if you get to the fifth or sixth, you 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 had a great fight against mike tyson right and there's another guy right now that's, that's very popular in boxing, maybe the biggest name in boxing right now today, and that's Tank Davis. And Tank Davis is a guy that takes the first four or five rounds out just to fill out his opponent. He gets hit more than the opponents. And in 60% of his fights, Tank Davis, who is undefeated, he loses the first four rounds out of five. That's saying something. Because there's two different types of people. There's two different types of players, right? And the OG is saying, hey, hey, keep it out of social media. But Fred Taylor didn't have to negotiate contracts in the time of social media like this. And he did. He was around some, but right on the end, right on the end, right? If I, if I were to pull up Fred Taylor and when he retired, the Internet is going to tell me he's 48 years old now, today. The Internet is going to tell me that Fred Taylor had his last season in the NFL in 2010. Twitter, Instagram, TikTok didn't exist in 2010. Twitter was, okay, Twitter was technically created in 2006, but that's not when it was like big, right? And 2012 is when it had 100 million subscribers or users, 2012. So Fred Taylor didn't have any idea of what was going on on social media. He's never had to negotiate a contract during this time. So while I respect the OG's part and the mindset, and us Niner fans, we're old, man. Think about how old us Niner fans are. We are cheering for a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in how long? Don't answer the question because I don't want y'all to be upset. But we're cheering for a team that hasn't won a Super Bowl in a couple of decades. All right? Which means that most of this fan base has been here that long. Before the social media era. So most of the fans don't like seeing the antics in public by these new kids. But this is the way of negotiating. Remove all team mentions out of your bio. Remove the name of the team you play for from your bio. Scrub your social media pages of any photos of you and team paraphernalia, team apparel, right? That's the new age 
of contract negotiating. Make it look like you don't care if you're there. Align yourself with someone who may have interest in you if this team doesn't want you. It's the new wave. I hated it when Debo did it. Don't like seeing Ayuk do it. And it's happened all around the league during contract negotiation time, guys. It's the new way. So, Fred, while I respect you, gangster, as the OG, while I respect it, it's a little outdated, man. This is an antiquated opinion. I understand it, and I respect it with all sincerity. But this is an old, outdated mindset, my man. I think if, if an OG can give you any advice, it's to continue to keep it away from the media. You can't negotiate contracts through the media. So allow them to do that behind the scenes and keep moving according to keep working on your craft, keep, you know, showing up or whatever you have to do. And, and hopefully, you know, they'll come around and cut that check for you. You have been extremely quiet, quiet, right? Ryan's been quiet as well in representing you. You guys haven't really negotiated in the media. And the first thing we saw was the FaceTime between you and JD. But whether it was the 49ers or someone else, it was leaked how much you were offered. Adam Schefter actually recently said they want him, but they don't want him at the price that he's asking to be paid. So this is in reference to the Mike Silver report saying that the Niners offered him $26 million a year on average, around $26 million a year. We never got confirmation on that. I don't know if Ayuk is about to confirm it was that number or not, but we'll see. But that's the report that he's referring to. So when you are handling things the way that you are, when you are being professional about it, when your agent is being professional about it as well, how does it feel to know, okay, I'm handling it this way, but now they've gone to the media and put those numbers out? It's a little bit frustrating, uh, especially when we're, we're getting down to details like that. like. Where we're putting down exact numbers in negotiation where that's talks between the team and my team um and we're trying to work through things work through a lot of things so for actual numbers and actual stuff like that to come out i think uh that it's, it's, it's a little bit it's a little i felt it was a little bit disrespectful a little bit ah i felt it was a little bit disrespectful for the actual numbers to come out he said confirmation not quite however didn't come from my camp whatever y'all heard didn't come from my camp and i felt it was a little bit disrespectful i'm gonna let it go yeah, unfair to me um but unfair that's part of also. it that's part of it. it is what it is it's, it's a dirty game it's a dirty game so i just feel like me the social media is a, is a way it's for a me dirty myself game. to leverage me and my team to leverage myself and and to leverage um what i'm trying to get because that's the way to get the message out so he answered both of these guys in this question here i felt it was a little dirty a little bit unfair because what happens is you got to get the fan base on one side or the other. The team not only has to make a financial decision on what they're going to do with him, they also have to find out how the fans are going to feel. If we let Brandon Ayuk walk after this season, is there a chance we lose just 10% of this fan base and ticket purchases in the stadium and the trickle-down effect of that 10%? 10% doesn't sound like a lot. But it is when you're talking about eight, nine home games, not counting the postseason, what that's gonna, how that's gonna affect the vendors. That 10% becomes much more significant in the grand scheme of things. And so the 49ers clearly leaked this information because Ayuk is saying he felt disrespected by it. Thank you, sir. He's saying he felt disrespected by it. So that means that the team somehow leaked this information or maybe it was a lucky guess he didn't confirm that it was actually leaked he didn't confirm that those numbers were real and the speculation was anywhere between 26 and 28 million should be the offer that was that before mike silver's report go back and watch nothing but niners video we've discussed this at nausea but what Ayuk is saying is hey so our clap back to that is using social media to our advantage because he's got to get the fans on his side also i saw Jimmy Garoppolo fans leave the 49ers and go to Oakland or Las Vegas. I saw Trey Lance supporters say on their 49ers platforms that if Trey Lance 
plays as a starter for the Cowboys against the 49ers. I hope he wins. You're going to sway some people. And so social media is going to give you the pulse on all of that. And that's what Brandon Ayuk is saying here. Self and, and to leverage um, what I'm trying to get because that's the way to get the message out there. That's the way to get the facts out there. And the facts are the facts. So I'm putting facts out there. February 12th, uh, you said, don't forget what got you there. Your brother said, okay, this is probably why we're not going to be here. Thank you for drafting they got us. got dates. Uh, one of your best homeboys. Uh, he also wonders... How can a guy that's all pro, over 1,300 yards, only have three catches in the Super Bowl? Uh, I see that you and your woman, you and your lady are extremely close. Even she was like, man, shoot, this is the last time me and Bray might be up here, right? So you yourself and all of your family members, all of your closest people that are connected to you had something to say or felt a certain way after the Super Bowl. What was it about that game that made all of you so upset? I think uh, I mean, another hard hit question. Game. This is See? good. Are y'all playing Super Bowl? You playing Super Bowl? No, See, it's just, it's just I wasn't like, going to go there. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, no, 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 no. I'm just asking. I'm, 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 I'm asking. <laughs> I have. You have? Two times. Uh, mad. I'm mad. <laughs> mad. Well, okay, so. And you won it? Yes. Okay, so. Okay, so. Well, you I know, lost you, one, too. You lost one, too. Okay, so. Like Super Bowl. His question is not disrespectful. He's asking for perspective's sake so he can go ahead and explain himself. So that's what we're dealing with. Come here. It was crazy. The Super Bowl is crazy. The emotions is crazy. It's like two weeks of just emotions. The game is like crazy emotions. Like it was probably the best feeling ever in terms of playing football. And I think once you get out of there, different results than you were expecting the whole entire time for those two weeks, three weeks, whatever the case may be, you feel it a lot more than you could ever think. Um, even looking back to it now, I didn't even realize how just how down how down I was, how messed up I was, and it's just emotional. It was just emotional for everybody, and I think uh, they they felt that on me. Um, my brother felt that on me, and he's just trying to speak out. He's just trying to speak out um, in terms of what he thought I may be feeling or or whatever. But that's what he felt, and that's just that, I think he asked valid questions. What's the? I know you're saying that's what he felt. So I'm gonna ask you straight up, man to man. You also posted on your story don't forget what got you there are you telling me that that wasn't connected to the super bowl ryan clark is airing his shit out he's not holding punches you're not going to sidestep my question by some long-winded soliloquy that didn't address what the first thing was that i asked to you let's run it back bro you're not going to convince me that your tweet your post sorry didn't have anything to do with how you felt about the super bowl and your amount of targets, because I had to watch the game again to analyze it. Brandon Ayuk had some man-to-man -man opportunities where Brandon Ayuk was wide open. So when you say don't forget what got you there, are you saying that that had nothing to do with the amount of times you were targeted? No, I absolutely did. I absolutely did. I get out of the out of the super. He didn't run from it. My post absolutely had to do with that. The amount of times that I was targeted my usage in the Super Bowl. Rich Madrid, love him or hate him, posted every route run by Brandon Ayuk. 80% of the time, he beat his guy. Shout out to Rich Madrid, man. Super Bowl, and I just feel like you're throwing the ball to me five, six times a game all year. Went, I went for 100, six, seven times this year. I turned 70 kids into 1,400, and then... Uh, here we are right now talking about being paid, getting paid top dollar in this market, but I don't know. So this Super Bowl is tricky. Uh, we've moved on past from the Super yeah. Bowl. When you look at what you have been able to accomplish. Not Here's why Ayuk is not going to want to harp on the Super Bowl. If the Super Bowl ended in favor of the 49ers, Brandon Ayuk is not Super Bowl MVP. Brock Purdy is not Super Bowl MVP. Debo Samuel isn't. Christian McCaffrey isn't. Nick Bosa isn't. Fred Warner isn't. George Kittle isn't. Trent Williams isn't. I mean, you run down the list of all pros and pro bowlers and all pro alternates and 
Pro Bowl alternates and all that shit. Uh, second team All Pros. I'm sorry. The Super Bowl MVP for the 49ers, had they won, would have been Jawan Jennings, another person at his position. So it's very smart for end his statement saying, but we're moving past the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl. Yes. Well, it's tricky. Uh, we moved on past from the Super yeah. Bowl. When you look at what you have been able to accomplish, not necessarily per reception, per attempt, per opportunity, it's tops in the league, right? To have 75 catches, over 1,300 yards. I think you only had like 106 targets though, mm -hmm. right? Which says with getting a lot less opportunity than some of the names we've heard in the off seasons, the Justin Jeffersons, the AJ Browns, the Amon Ra St. Browns. Her oh, route run, Brandon Ayuk all of them is my dogs. the But dude. you've turned, it, turned your opportunity, Her opportunity into success he's that guy. in a yes. different way than them. I think the way teams negotiate though, it's, let me try to figure out how I can keep the best players for the lowest price tag. And what they're going to use is they're going to say, well, this guy has this amount of catches. You only have 75. So what you and your team have to prove is, yeah, that's because we're doing this, we're doing this, and we're doing that. But when I get my chance, I'm as good as anybody in the league. And I personally believe that you've proved that. I was going I was going to have the numbers too. Number seven in receiving yards this year. But number 23 in targets. Come on, man. Have you ever thought about, because we know and Kyle Shanahan is a damn genius. I know you know that. We all know that. But it's run heavy. We know we know C-Mac going to get the rock because they're going to run, run the pass. If you was in a more pass-oriented offense and you got and you were top 10 in targets, do you ever think about what you could do? That's what we know. That's what I'm, that's what I'm thinking about right now. <laughs> I have. Question was all right. Those first three questions, Ryan Clark's question about the, the post, I give those all if I had to give them a great A+. Plus. This, is, this is a solid B plus right here, though. This is almost an A question, right? If you had more opportunities, because this is what Ryan Clark was saying, you got to sell them on what you do when you do get the ball, when you do get opportunities. Cool. And we broke that down all on nothing but diners. Go back and check the film. We broke it all down for you. But what Channing is asking now is, hey, if you had more opportunities in a different system, you think you'd still be that guy? Ayuk said, yeah, it's all I've been thinking about right now. I have so much more to give. I got so much more to give. That's why I'm like, when you go, when you talk, when you talk about social media and shit, it's a quarterback right there. I'm thinking about what I could do with him. I'm thinking about if, if, if the Niners don't want me to come back to play with them, I'm thinking about what I could do. I know what I could do. Yeah. So. And you, you could thrive as that X in a, True X. True X. True X. Put him over there by himself, one on one, and let him go to work. Best corners in the league on you. Let him go to work. I think Fred mentioned it earlier Talk talking about I like pure receiver. I like There's nothing wrong with Anytime the conference so I was... far. So far, we've heard three things that people said negatively from this interview, and none of it has been negative at all. Context is very important. People said that he tried to diss Debo. No. Fred Taylor said, We all watched the film, and I think everybody in here would agree that you were the best pure wide receiver. Every 49er fans knows that. You don't got to defend Debo. Debo is a damn good weapon. Debo is a better weapon than Brandon Ayuk. But Ayuk is a better pure wide receiver. And that's all he said. You don't have to go out there and say, oh, no, give my man Debo prop. Fuck all that. Do you think you could thrive in another system? Absolutely, I could. Put me one-on-one -on -one with any of the best corners in the league and watch what I do. Watch me work. Nothing he said so far has been flagrant. The whole thing about, oh, he's having fun. He's self-centered. He said, this is all about me. All bullshit so far. Every, all the negative shit that people have been saying on social media from the clips of this interview have all been bullshit. Brandon Ayuk hasn't said anything wrong so far except the one lie I pointed out at the very beginning of this. Looking at the way defenses would play you guys schematically, you normally get the best corner because you were the route runner. You were the guy they used in that way. And then obviously, Debo was a move guy. CMC, George Kittle, y'all can line up in all of these different places. And yes, there is the thought Right, that if I go to a different place, I get to be the man. I almost was Channing's teammate for that same reason. Here I am, I'm in free agency, I'm talking to Jeff Ireland. He's saying, man, you could be Troy Palomalu. We'll let you do the roaming. You can control everything. You don't have to back him up. You can be the guy. And we're going to offer you more money Miami. to do it. But it just didn't feel right to me. The grass wasn't green. And we see Patrick Queen right now. He watering his grass out in his front yard. 
because Marlon Humphrey said social the grass media references. may not be greener. But that is social media references. C.O.G. Taylor, this is what we're talking about here. You can't sit here and knock what's happening on, on social media because this is the way that people talk to each other now. A decision that you sometimes have to make. And I don't want to hurt your negotiating power in answering this question, but you've been to two NFC championships. You've, you know, you've, you've been to the Super Bowl. Would you give up some of those opportunities to be the man to continue to be an all pro receiver and win the way you have in San Francisco? I don't know what his answer is. I don't give a fuck what his answer is. In San Francisco, you are never going to be the man. Kyle Shanahan starts as the man. Followed by Christian McCaffrey. Followed by Brock Purdy. Followed by Trent Williams. Then Debo. Then Kittle. And then Ayuk. Are you willing to accept that role here as opposed to being the man somewhere else? Justin Jefferson is the man on that team. Tyreek Hill is the man on that team. Chase Young is the man on that team. Are you content with being a man on the team? I think I got here by taking risks, sometimes control risks, sometimes just saying F it and going at it. Like Patrick Queen, we'll never know. The grass may not be greener, the grass might be, it might, it might be, be greener, there. who knows? It might <laughs> yeah. be greener, who knows? Right. We won't know until it's all said and done. So all I could do is just, like y'all said, put my head down, go to work every single day, uh, pray, ask God to lead my steps, and go from there. Other than that, I don't know. How does a first round pick end up at Sierra College in JUCO? Just not taking, just not taking stuff serious in high school. I don't care about not this. taking, not I'm taking my skip this on education. So what was that conversation like? Uh, you didn't play your junior year or attention and stuff going. They're like, it's your, uh, we've never done this, so I want to do this and take advantage of it. So here's a question for you two, because I'm gonna take a moment to cut the room in half this way, because Tennant and I, we've never played in a Super Bowl nor lost a Super Bowl, <laughs> right? I like that. So we got a, <laughs> RC's always cutting the room in half. <laughs> if we win the championship, he cuts the room in half. But you two have been on a losing end, and and my question has always been, like, does it does it suck to not make it or to get there and lose it? Like the feeling of it. Are you still? And this is what Jed York had to learn, right? Jed York had to grow up. Jed York was a young, immature CEO. When he fired Jim Harbaugh, his statement was, "We don't hang championship banners." Meaning, I would have rather had not been there if we're going to lose this Super Bowl. That's what Jed York's message was during the Harbaugh era. Jed York recently came out before this season started and said, I had to mature, I had to grow and realize that because we don't win the Super Bowl does not mean we didn't have a successful season. It's growth and maturation. And us as fans, we're torn. Right. While we'll sit here and say, man, I wish we didn't lose the Super Bowl. I'm grateful for every opportunity I get to see my team play in January and February. Every time. Win or fucking lose. I am happy to see my team playing because while all these other fan bases are at home, y'all can't talk shit about us. Only one team can talk shit about us after we lose that Super Bowl. And so if I'm not talking to a Chiefs fan, it's SMD. We out here and we holding that shit down as Niner fans. That's what we doing. We talk shit to Cowboys. We got the same amount of rings as them bums. It's been just as long for both these franchises. But we talk shit to those bum-ass Cowboy fans because we got there. What y'all been doing? Where y'all at? This is a really good question. How is it for a player? Still going through it from that loss? Like, what, what, what is it like to you? Do you still think about it? I'll let him and, go first. And for you, yeah, because we got he, two. Yeah, he matters way more than I do. <laughs> I think, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure. Just because I feel like uh, I shouldn't have a Super Bowl loss. So mm. I'm always, uh, it's always on my mind. But at the same time, it showed me a whole new realm of where you can take this thing to. Because even playing in the Super Bowl, 
being at the Super Bowl, you don't really understand the magnitude of what you're playing in and what you have going on um, until it's really taken away from you and until it's not there for you anymore. And so I think it's, just, it's giving me a whole bunch of motivation. I think that's the, the new driving force in why I do what I do every single day. Yeah, I mean, it just sucks. Like, I think I'd rather not go to the Super Bowl than lose it. B.A. told you before, bro, for two weeks, you focus on one thing, and that's winning the Super Bowl, and there isn't a second that you think you're going to lose it. There's never a conversation about losing it. There's never a what happens if we don't win it. Every conversation is not just about winning it. It's about how you'll go. How you win it. That's very Why good. you are wow. better. Why you should win it. And through right. all of Why those conversations, to be there against that team. it never yes. dawns on you that it's possible that they have more points on the scoreboard at the end of the Steam. game than you do. For us, and we talked about it on the show, we're, you know, we're on our way to win it. Rashard Mendenhall fumbles. Right. For them, it's Brock Purdy has an opportunity to throw a touchdown. Defensive back is totally lost. Nobody blocks Chris Jones. But, like, that's the difference. Right, the people mm. who execute in those moments win Super Bowls, and you One don't play. get them back. But play. back that to play that the play, though, the Super Bowl. BA, how many times do BA you wide open right in the middle of the field? The Chris Jones pressure that made Brock throw him under the bus, BA. Throw nah. the, throw him under the bus. I don't too much think about that play. I think uh, I, I get that that question a lot, but I, I always think about the plays and the opportunities that we had long before that one. So take me through this. And I've been wanting to ask this question. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Turn it up. Come on. Y'all tried to call my man selfish. since, like, November 24, 2019. Y'all tried to call my man selfish. Y'all tried to say... Brandon Ayuk was throwing people under the bus. He made this whole interview. No, no, where, where the fuck is my applause? He tried to make this interview all about himself. Huh? On a play that he was wide open for a touchdown in the Super Bowl in overtime. Where Spencer Burford just completely whiffed on his responsibilities and left Chris Jones, the best defensive tackle in the NFL, Unblocked, forced Brock Purdy to throw early. Brandon Ayuk said, no, sir, that's not the play I focus on. We had opportunities earlier on in that game to put it away. Yeah, oh, you fucking right, I'm putting the round of applause on. Oh, you fucking right. Y'all tried to tell me that Brock Purdy was a piece of shit for the way he conducted himself in this interview, and I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet. He had a clear opportunity to throw somebody under the bus. He could have played the shoulda, coulda, wouldas here. No, there's plenty of other plays where we fucked up and didn't do oh, our jobs. Nah, I don't too much think about that play. I think uh, I, I get that that question a lot. But I, I always think about the plays and the opportunities that we had long before that one. So take me through this. And I've been wanting to ask this question since like November 24th, 2019. <laughs> right? November 23rd, 2019. There's three minutes and 54 seconds left. The Arizona State University Sun Devils are playing a top 10 team. This Oregon. is college shit. I'm skipping uh, it. I don't care about this line. part. Um, I'm going to skip up this. Three for myself and for him as well. You can. And let me stop you there. I feel like right now I'm in the right place, I, I, in the right spot. Nation. You mentioned you know what you can do with the with the in the right place, the right opportunity, the right quarterback. Uh, and let me and let me stop you there. I feel like right now I'm in the right place, I, I, in the right spot with the right quarterback right now. Oh my God, Brandon Ayuk gets another round of applause from me, man. I'm sorry, X. You got to chill out, bro. It's round of applause time, bro. Sorry, it's round of applause time. He cut my man off mid question to say, "Hey, no, I am in the right place." This is the right time, and we've got the right pieces around me, including the quarterback. This is not what this is about. If y'all thought that I was unhappy with who's around me, if y'all thought that I was upset about my quarterback, you're wrong. So much so that he said, hey, let me stop you right there.
Let me stop you right there. Put my man in his place, huh? Let's get back to it, man. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, bro. Good job, Brandon. Are you? Good job. Yeah. I think it's just an undeniable connection. You mentioned you know what you can do with the with the in the right place, the right opportunity, the right quarterback. Uh, and let me and let me stop you there. I feel like right now I'm in the right place, I, I, in the right spot with the right quarterback right now. But we're not on the right turn. So yeah. When you go. you're Terms FaceTiming JD, and you're talking about him being your friend. If and I know you never demanded a trade. If a trade happens and that place happens to be Washington. How great would it be to reunite with someone you're not only close to from a field perspective, but in your personal life, like Jaden, who is also that talented? I have one more meeting set up with the 49ers. We'll see how it goes. If it doesn't go in the direction in which we all hope for it to go, um, then it would be great. It would be great to link up with a great friend of mine, uh, my brother, great person, teammate, uh, and player that I feel could take my game to the next level. Well, you, you reached out to us, too, to come on. Is it something? It oh. feels like it's something. Just to me, it feels like it's something that you wanted to oh. get to the next level. Um, it feels and this is why the body language is this. And not this. You guys got to watch this show. Channing asks questions about sex. Favorite freaky stuff. Everybody he gets on here. He asks all kinds of off the wall questions. He's been pretty reserved right now. Channing. I wanted to know why the body language is off early. Run this back. We've been on for over an hour now. Run this back. Huh? Been trying to figure out why the body language is off. Did he just say that Ayuk requested to talk to them? They didn't reach out to Ayuk and say, hey, man, we got to get you on during these contract negotiations. He said you reached out to us. Oh, man. Oh, man. This could be the first fuck up for Brandon Ayuk this whole interview. Well, second, because I still don't believe that that other shit was happening. But here we go. Uh, and player that I feel could take my game to the next level. Well, you, you reached out to us, too, to come on. He asked to be it there. Feels like it's something, just to me, it feels like it's something that you wanted to, wanted to get off your chest. Nah, if you got some shit to say, to say it. I've been watching for a minute. I've been watching. I was in there. I was getting ready to just listen to the theme song in my head. I just <laughs> I just wanted to come chop it up with you. I just wanted to. For sure. Like, the business side of it is a tough thing to be a part of for a young That the film cut. It's a film cut. Ayuk said something they did not want in there. This is a film cut. I want y'all to pay attention to this. Let me pause the music. Let me stop the music. Let me stop the music. Let me stop the goddamn music. I want y'all to hear the break in here. You're not going to hear it because there's no, I was in the, and then the cut's off. No, that's not what happened. I was in there. I was getting ready to just listen to the theme song in my head. I just... <laughs> I just wanted to come chop it up with y'all. I just wanted to. For sure. Like the business side of it is a tough thing to be a it's part a of for a young dude. And That's I know you're a first rounder, you got bread, but this is this is generational money. This is that 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 craziness. Is it stress you out? Because you seem like you're cool with it, but it seems like, you know what I'm saying, it might be heavy on your on your heart. It's heavy for sure. It's heavy for sure. I think for me playing football, it wasn't, it was never, it didn't start off with it didn't start with the money. I think the money was something that I got to see along the way. Like being a first round draft pick, fell into my lap. First round draft pick, fifth year option, fell into my lap. And I think the situation that we're in right now fell into my lap. But at the same time, I don't think it fell into my lap for no reason at all. Like I said, I was a Juco product that went to Division One to first round draft pick to second team all pro. I know it's a lot more. I know it's a whole bunch more. And I just want to move forward. I want to a team to to look at me and value me as a top receiver uh, so I can go out there and continue to do what I do and show them every single day the same way that I have, as I've been, that that's in fact what I am. I seem like the money shows respect. It seems like you want the respect of being that dude. Top dog. 
that's what you want. That's what you said. It's, the, mo- the money shows how much people value you. Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I like. I, I used. I used to. Tell, I want them to say, oh, "We didn't overpay this dude." And then I spin back around and, nah. Well, we think your your work. It's interesting. It's very interesting. Because there's been plenty of times where. You know, when George Kittle signed his contract, I was the first person to say George Kittle's probably never going to be a thousand yard wide uh, rec- receiver again in his career. And he got me this year. It's cool. He got me. He proved me wrong. When Debo signed his contract, I said he's never going to have a year like the 2019 year again as a wide back. It's never going to happen again. So far, I've been right. Not that Debo's not been great. Not that Debo's not a good weapon, because he fucking is. But it just don't hit the same. I said that. What Ayuk is saying is, when, if they pay me, I'm going to show them we didn't overpay this guy. Because that's what it's all about, right? If the Niners knew for a fact that Brandon Ayuk was going to be a 1,500 yards a year guy, and he was going to have 12 to 15 touchdowns on the year, they'd have no fucking problem giving this guy $30-plus plus million a year. Fact. Fact. And not a single 49er fan in the world would complain about it. But if they give him that 30, and he comes out and has 800 yards and three touchdowns, he's overpaid. He was all hype. He needed the system. He needed the players around him. He's not that good. Blah, 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 blah. That's what would be the narrative if he didn't live up to that check. There's not a single person in Kansas City complaining that Patrick Mahomes makes $50 million a year on average and signed a $500 million contract over the course of 10 years. You know why? Because Patrick Mahomes deserves it all. That's how they feel in Kansas City. No one complains about that contract. Nobody. Not a single person complains about that contract. This is what I want to ask 49er fans. What's the last contract we complained about? Hmm, I might have to write that shit down. You know what? Let me send a message right now to my man Wayne. What's the last 49ers contract we complained about? Mm. Live on air. Okay. We'll be discussed this week on No Harm, No Foul. Value you. Yeah, yeah. I remember, I, like, I, I, used, I used to tell I want them to say, oh, we didn't overpay this dude. And then I spin back around and, nah. We think your your work, whatever it is you're you're asking for. But let's go back really quick. This motherfucker requested to be on the uh, show. Top receiver, and didn't get top his quarterback. You, you mentioned Jaden a couple of times. Your, your top this dog. This explains why he didn't uh, get it done. Did you? He didn't know in your years say back they were to ASU. Did you see him being a nut? I don't care. On about a team this. who were varsity. Come on, let's go. Let's, let's do great. Take me where I wanted to go, and that's exactly what he did. What does he do great? Get the ball back. That you want to have on your team for sure. And you guys were down a little bit. Like, what would have. It was third and they didn't need this one right here. So, having that special connection, like, you just. For sure. You know, even with that, though, right? You're, you know, because I don't, I don't want to put you in the position of being somewhere else before you're somewhere Correct. else. Right. right. Fantasy. You know, Fantasy. Right. Thank you, Ron. You know, sure. right. And so, um, and I've been i'm so excited i've seen it in person what so many times between you two i was i would be excited to see it again Ryan clark is it's basically the, the same color i got a. to watch it in the first time but you are on a team with really good football players george kittle you know years ago he actually just restructured his his last year or, or this year of his contract to add more money but we've seen cmc get paid debo got paid last year they draft ricky pirasol who was also at Arizona, at Arizona State. And so you're seeing these guys get paid. You're continuing to add to the offense. 
Also, Brock Purdy has to get paid. You saw what Trevor Lawrence got. Why can't he get that? You saw what Kirk Cousins got. Why can't he get that? Do you ever wonder how there'll be enough money for everybody? Nah, that ain't my, that ain't, I mean, that ain't, nah. Good answer. That ain't my business to get into. I got, I'm worried about me right now. Yeah. And when I say I'm worried about me in terms of my financials, I don't know about what the financials they got going on or this person got going on. I don't know about that. I, I, ain't, I don't know. You, ain't, you can't afford a Lamborghini, you can't have one. Beautiful answer. It is not my job to fucking worry about what the next man is going to get. It's not my job to pay Brock Purdy. It's not my job to make sure the 49ers can afford to pay Brock Purdy. This is a fucking business, right? When the teams let go of a player and they say, hey, it wasn't anything personal. It was business. Players got to have that same mentality. I don't have to give y'all no fucking discount. Huh? It's nothing personal. This is business. I got a family to feed. The market is what the market is for me. This is what I bring to the table. This is what I get paid. It's out there. It's on paper. There's a list of that shit. I fall in here, not here. Pay me here, not here, not here, not here. Pay me here because that's where I fall in. I love the answer. Not selfish. Business. Business is separate. No hard feelings. Business. Trent Williams was a day away from signing with the Kansas City Chiefs because the Niners weren't going to give him the contract he wanted. Nobody talks about that. You know why? Because he ended up here. That's bad business to talk about now. Oh, no, we don't want to bring that up because we love Trent. Trent is beloved in San Francisco. We replaced Joe Staley with Trent fucking Williams by a day by a day by a day he was out of here the text messages were sent he was gone it's not my job to make sure y'all can pay jimmy or kittle or fred warner or debo samuel or even christian mccaffrey or brock per none of that shit has anything to do with me you want me you want this lamborghini you fucking pay for it. I don't know about that. I, I, ain't, I don't know. If you, ain't, if you can't afford a Lamborghini, you can't have one. <laughs> no, that, hey, that, is, that is the perfect answer. But, but in that, right, like we've all been in contract negotiations. You feel like you've accomplished a certain thing. And the way that negotiations work is they tell you all the reasons why they can't give you what you feel like you're worth. Mm -hmm. And they tell Not you it's just problem. business. Mm -hmm. When throughout the entire season, Kyle Shanahan is telling you, you're going to win on this play. This guy can't check you. If we have you with this opportunity, this matchup, this one-on-one, -on -one, we're going to get you the football. How do you focus on not taking contract negotiations personally? Because it's hard. Now, you got to take it personally. Are you not supposed to? Thank you. I'm asking oh, you. Oh, I took them personally oh, come every on. time. Oh, yeah. I'm you taking it you. personal. It's personal. I'm taking it personal. personal. Because it's not I, I, I in between anybody else. I see it's you and, as, and you don't see me as that. Or you do, but you don't. You can't financially do it. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm not sure. I just feel like it's no it's no hard feelings, though. If you don't want right. to do it or you can't do I it. I don't hate the Niners. I don't I'm hate sure there's Kyle. somebody that will. If what about the hometown cool. discount? Oh, we ain't doing no hometown discount. discount. You know, these nuts. There, you comfortable. Got your locker there. You got your parking spot. You know, you take discount a couple Discount you know? these nuts. I mean, I mean, taxes will be cheaper everywhere else, baby. We we'll have to see. We we'll have to see. Except we'll on the see. Jets. We'll I think the, the question is, and Freddie could probably answer this better than I can. I was, I was undrafted, right? So, all the money I was ever offered after my first deal was life-changing money to me. Like no matter, no matter what it was. Like when we started talking about multi-million-dollar deals and guaranteed money and bonuses, all of those things were a new world to me. You know, like my check I just learned after that Ryan taxes Clark was as a signing bonus no as an idea. undrafted free agent was like six hundred and eighty-three dollars. Holy shit! Like that shit. was what, like that was what I got. That's what a signing. Right? This is real talk. <laughs> say what? He he laughed at me. What, what did he Look just at say? That's you fucking crazy. Money. Yeah, because <laughs> dollars. Like, my my signing bonus as an undrafted free agent in two thousand and two was a thousand dollars, and then I made league minimum every year. 
And Is so Snyder the owner? That was I got I was, went to the Giants. Ah. And it wasn't it wasn't about who the owner was. It was about I had no other option. Right? Two teams called my agent wow. after the draft. By the time he got off the phone with one team, they had filled their free agent spots. Right. Holy and so shit. when I got to the opportunity, have an opportunity to sign in Miami, I had some other visits set up. No matter what these people gave me, I was going to be richer than I ever was. Right. And so my thought was, what is the best possible position for me to be in? How can I be as happy as I can possibly be? And that decision was to go back to Pittsburgh. And the next year, we go to the Super Bowl. And the next year, mm. I'm a pro bowler. And then mm. a year later, I'm a captain on the most storied you franchise. you banging them over the head. organization in football history. Just like Ayuk is doing like, that was right fucking now. Story. That was how things worked out for me. That's Ayuk's story In negotiating too, though, bro. right now, in your life he right now. He happened to be a first round What pick, is your though. top priority? Obviously, it's you. Is it make the most money? Is it be in the best situation? Is it for my family to be as comfortable as they possibly can where we live? What is your number one priority? Take care of my family um, and put myself in a position to be the best football player that Brandon Ayuk could be. Systems can make some players. Because you thrive in this system. I would say I came out of a 4-3 where you just run through gaps. Then I went, and that's when the whole NFL went to a 3 four. You had to go hit them big ass guards every damn play. <clears throat> and I had to get bigger. I had to gain weight to play in that. I think if throughout my career, if I played in the 4 3, I might have I might have had better stats. I might have done more. Could you thrive in any system? Because now they got the RPO stuff. Now they got the Y. Now they got the even the, the stuff that McDaniels, the Kyle Shanahan tree that you have already thrived in. Could you thrive in any system? I believe so. I believe so because, like I said, I'm a true ex. Uh, and it's a loaded question. We're supposed to say no. Like, get the I'm fuck out. I don't, I don't, I don't fuck about it. I don't care. About I was saying Miami, Tyreek, he, yes. he led the NFL in receiving yards. But they criticize him because they say Mike McDaniel schemes up so much stuff. And it's the same thing with Kyle Shanahan. It's that whole tree. Who is it? Sean McVay. All them offensive guys. What do you say the to the floor, people that yeah. say guys like yourself that go crazy, Reek that goes crazy, uh, Puka Nakua that goes crazy in those offenses that say, oh, it's on the scheme and they don't the guy. But like a guy like Tyreek, Tyreek is the reason the scheme kind of like McDaniel went to go. McDaniel pulled up to Miami and cashed out for Tyreek Hill. Yeah. All right. Because of who he already he wanted was. Because right. what he's going to bring him. and what he's going to add to this team. And that's going to make everything easier for everybody else. And I think sometimes Good fucking point. Uh, people don't realize that as well, too, that it, these receivers, this is it's a it's a it's a, it's a throwing receiving game right now. So when these guys are out here and and they're a threat like Tyreek Hill, then it makes it a lot easier for this for your scheme to open up. Right. Coaches just reverse engineering their philosophies. I got to have this type of guy that opens up everything else. But, you know, uh, just really going back a second, RC asked you, you know, like your purpose in playing the game. Uh, do you ever look at like the history of a game? You know, look at different players at your position and say, I want to be the best that have ever played this position. Even for your team, your current team, uh, for the Niners, you got two guys that have played there that are in top five in NFL history in receiving yards. And, and Jerry obviously is the top of the top in touchdowns, yards, et cetera. Uh, and then T.O. is that other guy. Looking at the history of the game, who's your, your, your top five receivers all time in the, in the history of the game? I'll go Randy. I don't really care about this. T.O. Uh, mm -hmm. Jerry. A.B. Mm -hmm. Julio Jones. And Julio. That's a solid top five. So you are, and you are, first off, now, you're definitely a measurables guy. Because you got three of the uh, most young kid. It's cool. freakishly talented How wide receivers in that group. Mm -hmm. And then you got Jerry and A.B. We just had A.B. on the show. I would love to know, because he's 5'10". He ran four or five. I think he, for six years, I think he was the best wide receiver in the world. And the numbers said it. What is it about his game that you like so much? You can't stop him. You can't <laughs> stop him. Like, it might not look like the new game, how it is right now, but you can't stop him. He's, go mm. he's going, he's taking the, <laughs> it's whatever, however he wants to get it done, he's going to get it done. And I, and I watch him and Julio Jones. Uh, those are my two favorite receivers. Right, right now, when it comes to Congress, and 
some of the guys that you'll be compared to right now when it comes to contracts have Hall of Fame trajectories, right? The way Justin Jefferson has started a career, especially until being injured this year, he had the best numbers we'd ever seen Crazy. through that span. Uh, Amon Ra, St. Brown, obviously A.J. Brown, and what he was able to do once he became C an D. Eagle. C.D., right? You look at all of these different dudes, and when it comes to contract negotiations, that's who you're going to be compared to. How does Brandon Ayuk, who is an all-pro, say, I know I'm not asked all pro to do not what some of those guys do, but I can and or I should second be team paid that way. Because that's what you're asking. Not maybe the same amount of money, but you're asking to be paid in that neighborhood. How are you or how is your representation able to make that argument? In my opinion, in the Niners offense, do a whole bunch of different stuff. Like, I'm an extended tackle. I'm going in there. No matter who, about that Patrick blocking, Queen, baby. Like going there, there you like go. He was just talking Come about on. going there. Pat Got to lay the on. wood on him. That's right. Hit those guys, hit guys on the edge, and then at the third down, go in. First, or where, take the top off the defense. Come in and do all these things. So I think my value is to the team. Yeah. And when we talk about um, these other teams, like then we're that. talking about I receiver value work. and putting up numbers and doing stuff like that when we, when we talk about moving in diff different directions. I, lo I love agent, that answer. I love uh, that said, answer. Um, that he talk oh, he I love that answer. Oh, I got to rewind that. Ah, nah, man. Do I do an applause again? I'm not going to do an applause. Fuck it. Yes, I am. I love that answer. I'm going to do... I'm going to tell you what I do good for the Niners. Huh? I'm going to tell you what I do well for the Niners. Not just what I do well. Now, if you put me on another team, we can talk about my wide receiver attributes. But the Niners need me to be a blocker. Not just a blocker, but a good blocker. Huh? Highest graded non lineman on the team in the league is Brandon Ayuk. Huh? Come on. Yeah, run that shit back. It's him. When he does with the ball on a per catch basis, tops in the league. Tops in the league. Seven in total yards, but 23rd in targets. And that's with me being the best blocker. Are you fucking kidding me? I do it all, I'm all around. I, I'm, I am a complete wide receiver. Pay me as such. Pay me as such. And if you want to talk about what I can do as a route runner, if you want to talk about what I can do on the move, if you want to talk about what I can do with my catches, then we'll talk about those other teams. But I'm not there yet. How are you oh, or it. how is your representation able to make that argument? In my opinion, in the Niners offense, do a whole bunch of different stuff like I'm an extended tackle. I'm going in there no matter who. Patrick Queen, I like going there. Like we were just talking about going there. Pat Roquan, hit those guys, hit guys on the edge. And then at the third down, go in. They said it for George Kittle, right? Niner fans was cool with giving George Kittle his money. Because they say, oh, well, he's also an offensive lineman, right? Because he has to do the blocking. Well, Ayuk is saying, I do that same shit. I got to block, too, as a fucking wide receiver. And I got to win on third downs. Nobody give a fuck if George Kittle wins on third downs. We got Juwan Jennings. We got Brandon Ayuk. We got Debo Samuel. We just want you to show up when it's time for you to answer. Give a fuck what you do on third down, tight end. First, or where, take the top off the defense. Come on and do all these things. So I think my value is to the team. Yeah. And when we talk about um, these other teams, then we're talking about receiver value and putting up numbers and doing stuff like that when we, when we talk about moving in diff different directions. Your agent uh, said um, that he got a call from someone in Arizona at the time when Nikhil Harry was still at Arizona State and he said there's a first round draft pick receiver at Arizona State. And he said, he told him, yeah, I know, Nikhil Harry. And he's like, nah, it's this other guy, Brandon Ayuk. And uh, he'll probably be mad at me. I called Jordan, his first um, his first training camp and, and at Arizona State. And I was like, hey man, how you doing? And he's like, pop, you know what? Um, he's like, I'm doing pretty good. He's like, but I don't think I'm ever gonna play. And I was like, why? He's like, man, I can't stop B.A. And I was like, well, what is it about? And that was before you really got went crazy. I was like, well, tell me why just because you can't stop him, you don't think you'll play. He said, because he's from Nevada. They don't even play football there. <laughs> when did you start to feel or did or how long right. have you felt? I don't care you about could be the type of receiver to have the year you had. Tell me you don't have to feel bad that my on that grass on the football. That's just that's I don't see it. Out there.
That'd be level you know you could be a even coming from a, a JUCO. Damn, I don't care about this. Those levels of it, like you know, when I'm a receiver, a top NFL receiver, and you're the type of dude that's accountable, going to be there, going to be available, even when you're not, when it's not mandatory, you be there. Up until this point, I like, which was which, which it wasn't hard because, um, like I said, I, I live out there. That's where my house is at. That's where my family is at. That's where I reside where I spend all my time. So to go into the building in the off season, that's the easiest thing for me. Like when I leave from here and head back to California, I'm going back to the building. That's the easy, that's the spot where I work out at. That's that's just that's where I go. When I leave from here and head to California, I'm going back to the building. Those were the videos we saw. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all full circle. It's the easiest thing for me. Like when I leave from here and head back to California, I'm going back to the building. That's the easy, that's the spot where I work out at. That's back to the that's building. Just, that's, that's where, where I, I go. Out. That's just how it's been. Uh, that's how it's been. He didn't say when this is over. That's how it's been. That's what I'm doing. That's what I do. I work out there. Remember what it was like, why is he throwing passes in his backyard? Why is he showing some random ass baseball field? It's all the same reasons that we don't see 49ers written in any of his social media bios anymore. It's negotiation tactics. He's still showing up. He's still working out at the team facility. So says him. He just said it. But I'm not showing you all that. No. Then it looks like I'm part of it. Which means, why would you do that? Right? Who are you hurting? The team knows you're there. Every time you scan in that little HID card, dude, it says Brandon Ayuk clocked in 7.24 a.m. It says that. Right? So, who are you hurting, helping, or harming by not or telling that information? Only the public. Only us who don't know from the outside looking in. No one's giving it to y'all like this. I hope y'all pay attention. Brandon Ayuk has been going to the team facility to work out. The Niners haven't said that. Ayuk just said it. But you won't see it because we're in negotiation times. Now, why won't he say it? He needs the public to be on his side. When he said that he was, it hurt him and he felt it was disrespectful that the $26 million number got leaked, it's not because someone was talking about the numbers. The Niners offered him $50 million. You think he would feel disrespected that they offered him that much and the number got out? No. He feels disrespected because he felt at that time the fans felt he was only worth that much and he didn't accept it. And if he didn't accept it, then the fans turn against him because now the fans feel like you're trying to fleece us. You're trying to get more than you are worth. Brandon Ayuk is playing a public perception game during these contract negotiations. Again, Fred Taylor, sit this one out, big dog. This is 2024 social media contract negotiating at its finest. It's what we're seeing. Not that I'm like, not that I'm liking it, because I'm not. I could care less. But y'all giving me something to talk about, and I'm doing it. Damn it, I'm doing it. My weight, the weight, the weight coaches. My shout out my my guy Destin Perry. He said, pull it to the weight. We're our weight program in the summer because you elevate these guys. You put you push the whole entire program. Even when we're not, even when we're not doing anything. And I felt like that was big for me. Um, and that's a big thing that I that I carry all the time is the game. Right, this right, game, I don't, the I don't, I don't care. I don't big care. league. We always ask our our guests this question, and, and, and all of that. What what has been your biggest pivot? That's that that one moment. Yeah, probably, I don't probably care about ten play on the for the pivot thing. I don't be care. on the grass. So you were ineligible. Ineligible. <laughs> I, I couldn't read, and I don't. I, plays, you couldn't read. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> I, I couldn't read. I even got there. All I know is I was ineligible and I couldn't play. Out there, like I, the thing. That's the thing. I think it was just, like I said, just worrying about some other stuff. You chasing a girl? No, nah, I mean. Oh, I, don't, oh, Ari, I, don't, I don't know how the school. <laughs> elementary school. Great. I'm, and every color Jabo jean that they made. Jabo. No, I'm just going. I have a question. So your mom's a San Francisco 49er fan. What was it like growing up in a household that dressed you in red and gold? And I know I think you strayed away a little bit and kind of followed your own path. But for her to get an opportunity to see her son that she raised be drafted by the team she always cheered for. Yeah. 
she 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 loves it she loves it she loves it just the colors just the the team itself she's a huge 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 fan and to see her son be able to accomplish some of the things that i've been able to accomplish in the same exact colors a lot of y'all grew up screaming and yelling about when i was younger it's pretty cool my fingers on the button how would she deal with you being in different colors in the nfl you know she on my side right now she don't too much care about them colors right now she's trying to she's trying to make sure her son's straight so how do you feel about the kansas jayhawks if you're taking risks, I'm going to call me Arizona State. And here we are, right? And an Ayuk wearing in 2020. What Important uniform question. is Brandon Ayuk wearing in 2024? If I were to take a guess, probably, probably a Niner uniform. I'm not holding out all season. That's what that means right there, y'all. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not holding out all season. I'm going to play hardball, but I'm not holding out all season. Give that man a round of applause. That's all we needed. That's it. I don't give a fuck about the rest of this interview. We answered all the important questions. I don't give a shit what he says. I don't care. I don't care. Y'all got an hour and a half out of me on this bullshit. Y'all talked all this shit about Brandon Ayuk and... How he's this and how he's that. Y'all taught to tell me that this guy was selfish and threw Debo when they're busting up. Hey, fuck those dudes. Listen to this interview for yourself. And there's plenty more. I I, I left 15 minutes early. Hold on, hold on. You a little loud. Hey, hold on. A little late. I mean, a little loud. Listen, I left 15, 20 minutes out there for y'all. I skipped about 15, 20 minutes. There's plenty out there. Go find it, guys. The pivot. Type in Brandon Ayuk. Pivot. It'll pop up. It's like two hours long. or No, it's 55 minutes long. Some shit like Go out there. Check it out. Hear it for yourself. Form your own opinions. I just shared mine. All right? Hope you guys enjoyed. I want to thank you guys for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, man. This will be up on the Patreon exclusively. Maybe one day I'll make it available on the YouTube. X, do your thing, big dog. Take us home. Rest in peace. I've been eating long enough now. Stop being greedy. Just keep it real, partner. Give to the need. Ribs is touching. So don't make me wait. Fuck around and I'm going to bite you. Snatch the plate. I thank the Lord every day that I'm blessed with the gift. I'm the best, so unless you want to press with the step. Don't touch that. Uh-uh. Leave it alone. A 49ers got a message here got a message here for Kyle Shanahan John Lynch Rog whoever out there is part of these negotiations stop being greedy let's keep it real partners give to the needy Ayuk that guy's in need of a paycheck I know a lot of faithful out there might have thought that this song was about Ayuk being greedy asking for more money you're wrong Pay that man right here in the tier that he belongs in. Not here. Not here. Pay that man. The Niners been eating long enough, and the money's only going up for them. These guys get one shot. They get one opportunity. Pay these fucking guys and let these guys go home. I'm out of here. Peace.